standing out the other day, the other way. This is the real magic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Visual effects is actually quite a big part of Merlin. I mean, one, it's a show about magic, and uh, you know, obviously, we have to help create a lot of that. Um, we've got some quite major CGI creatures which we're doing in the show. One of them being a dragon. It's quite a big deal, really. Obviously, you can't direct a CG creature on the stage as well as you can an actor. Yes. Things didn't quite go according to plan. I mean, they did, except. It wasn't Arthur who wielded the sword. It was Uther. Well, at the moment, we're on the dragon set, which is uh, a set that we've built to kind of go all through the series. Now, the dragon is obviously he's quite a main part of the, of the series. He's, he's almost one of the stars of the show. He's Merlin's advisor and, like, you know, mentor in a way. Very important character to get right. So we spent a lot of time developing the dragon. It's, in fact, it's been in development for about a year. It's a great opportunity, creative opportunity, for us to um, show our designs um, as a visual effects department. Because most visual effects departments don't get the opportunity to create their own creatures. Uh, action! My job on set, I have to, in my head, I have to understand where the creature's going to be, how it's going to react. You know, because when you've got a complicated sequence where Bradley, who plays Arthur, is uh, having to fight off an invisible creature, really. I mean, he's, he's on set, and we, you know, have, we direct him in a certain way to say, right, the creature's this big, you're going to be, you know, waving your sword at it. The whole process of the series, um, we're working on it for, I think we've got about six or seven months. In fact, no, we've got a lot shorter than that. <laughs> They first mentioned doing a talking dragon, and we said, yeah, we bit their arm off uh, when they said that, because if you're working in this business, that's the kind of thing you really want to be doing. It's an extremely difficult challenge to make a dragon talk, because while we've done other talking characters uh, with the bespoke facial tracking system that we've invented over the last few years, they'd normally been sort of humanoid figures. You can make a chimpanzee talk, because you can track uh, the facial expressions of an actor onto... Uh, a chimpanzee or a monkey, for example, because it looks vaguely humanoid, but a dragon is quite a hard one to make talk. They weren't quite convinced that we were going to be able to pull it off, um, and in the end we had to mock up a test for them to show them it was going to work, it was worth investing. You know, there's a little tiny bit of you when you say you can do something, and you're pretty confident that you can, but uh, not until you see it yourself are you uh, relaxing, as it were. What they've done is, which is fantastic, is they've actually mapped John Hurt's face with dots. And so when he talks, they're matching the dragon. So while it is, you know, CGI, it is, if John Hurt was a dragon, this is what he would look like. Favourite magical skill? I've got quite a few. <laughs> Often I won't get a chance to see the payoff of, of what, what, what I'm doing until all the CGI and special effects have been added in. One of my favourite bits has been uh, creating a fire that, that shoots across the ground. That burns a night, and that's pretty fun to do because because uh, I could actually see it happening. Whereas a lot of the times, whenever I do magic, I'll be doing it, and I have to kind of imagine what it's doing. Uh, we are in uh, Pierrefonds in in northern France, and uh, behind me um, stands stands well Pierrefonds Castle, which we've now adopted as Camelot Castle, and everybody sort of gets to turn up at work uh, first thing in the morning and be greeted by that, for the basis of the work that we're doing, it creates this world without us having to do too much work ourselves, because it's already there and it's very inspiring. There's a scene in episode five that we did where we're in the courtyard facing the griffin and um, we had a sort of a, a small crowd of spectators watching us charge around screaming our heads off, trying to fight something this, you know, mythical creature which wasn't there and it's sort of it, it gets the adrenaline pumping and you know gets you sort of ready for the scene and then you've got the rooms that they have inside which there's this massive hall that you see in the first episode um, which Anthony keeps on saying it's probably people are gonna think it's CGI because it's just it's it's huge for Camelot! For Camelot! 
the, the most exciting thing for me, I think, is, has been the, the sword fighting. It's just quite enjoyable to sort of work on these routines and, and then bring them to life. And it's kind of like being a big kid with a, with a toy sword. <laughs> Sword work is always potentially dangerous. If one of the if the actor or the stunt guys forget the moves, they can uh, end up wearing the sword around the head or any part of the body. So they need to make sure that they rehearse the moves slowly, build up their speed, and always remain eye contact throughout. Shoulder come up to there. Your elbow goes there. No higher. This is my trusty sword. It's not Excalibur, as uh, some people would be familiar with. It's um, I personally like to call it Dave. However, I don't think it's got an official name. Uh, it's just one for me. And again, not as heavy as it looks, quite easy to sort of swirl around. I had a guy called uh, Andreas Petridis um, do, the, do the stunt coordination on this, and he, he, was, he was great. He sort of, there was sort of never a moment where I wasn't sure of what I was supposed to be doing, and he taught me uh, a lot of stuff very fast. So um, I owe him a lot to, uh, with regards to kind of how well I can sort of wheel this around. This is the first I've seen of this today. This is, this is my hunting crossbow and um, one of the bandits gets um, the full, full whack of this in, in, his, in his back, which uh, I'm sure he's looking forward to. Um, action. I do, I do all my stunts in, in the show. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm doing, doing my own stunts. Um, there's been um, a previous scene with, uh, with the rabbits. Um, this was actually a vicious rabbit that actually tried to, tried to attack me. And, uh, but uh, they've cut the scene, I think, from the episode, which is a bit of a pain because it was actually quite dramatic. What is it? You really are a total buffoon, aren't you, Merlin? No, I was being serious. I really do save, save the day, really, in this scene. Um, it's really all down to me. Arthur's fighting away in this scene, but what he doesn't realise is that Merlin's had a bit of a hand in helping out in it, so I cast a quick little spell that makes a branch fall from one of the trees onto one of the bandits, and uh, technically saves the day. Careful, coming down, coming down. There you go. I'll do, thank you. Okay, mate. This is the Fairy Elder makeup, and it's a silicon prosthetic makeup. Yeah, we're just in the process of uh, applying it and gluing it all down. He's going to be suspended on wires, and uh, part of him is going to be uh, computer generated. And, uh, so we're just sticking on the prosthetic makeup at the moment. Uh, well, it's taken about four weeks to build the thing, sculpt it, mold it, make all the pieces. And then it's probably going to take us about four hours uh, to glue, glue the whole makeup on in, in total. I'm thinking this is going to be my look, actually. I think this is going to be my new publicity shot as well. Now I'd like to rehearse the exit. And action! The effects that are being put into this, the, the actual look of the show, the way it's been created, this world, I think is extremely intriguing. Um, as well as the characters, I think the actual journey of the characters is something you want to follow. I think by the time you finish watching episode one, you think, what is going to happen next? I was very excited to get to do my first stunt, because it was my first stunt on this show, first stunt ever, um, really. <laughs> so whenever they were linking me up, I was well excited about it. And, um, but. It wasn't painful. It was fine because they, they had like padded the wall and all that. So, um, but yeah, I was well excited to get to do it um, because I remember Jeremy, the director, was one of the very first things he said to me. And he came up, he said, um, "You know that scene that we've got in episode seven, um, with the stunt you get you get put up against the wall." I'm thinking, you know, you should do that yourself. I was like, "Yeah, I want to do it definitely." <laughs> I would describe this series as a swashbuckling magical adventure. It's just magic. I think everyone's going to love it. 100%, it's the magic.